One of the ways you can really get in the weeds on working in music is you kind of go you know, kind of a wild inspiration phase and you're throwing everything in and then you got to save it and the next day you come up and it reloads and files are missing. It's easy to fix. In Ableton Live, you can file, collect all and save. So particularly in the case where you might have two or three other drives or a bunch of other stuff, this is essential. And normally, just to make a little point, see all these grayed out items? These are terabyte drives, six terabytes of audio that I use that are offline. But if they were online, that means that any little snare hit or anything after a big moment of inspiration could be where? It could be from these other drives. In the second that you say, file, save, good night, let's have a beer. It's all done. It's nothing here but platinum, boys. And then you come up the next morning and it doesn't load. Why? Those drives are offline. So this collect all and save is the dialogue for you. Basically says, guys, everything that's in this project Put it in a folder on my desktop, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so Command-D on the Mac gives me the desktop. I name it uh, appropriately. Okay, and take this little dash out. This isn't great, and it's going to empty all these clips out, and you'll see this dialog where it's pushing all those clips back in. And this dialog is interesting. Live creates temporary files. So I'll show you where they go. They go like this in music, user, me, music, Ableton, temporary. So everything you kind of jack around with in the course of screwing around with a project, this is actually what happened today. You can see it's just a few minutes ago. Live consolidates all that stuff. But it's already done that for me here on the desktop when I look at this isn't great project and I see them all in there okay so these are things that I redid all the rest of the files are in the Ableton factory packs and samples in in the Ableton install okay TMI all you want to know is no I don't really need those temporary files anymore. Why? Because they're saved in the project. Oosh, just like this, delete. Okay, and then it's going to go and repopulate all these things. Now you're saved. This isn't great. Okay, so then I my uncle thinks it's good music. My aunt thinks I'm a star. My parents are not sure. My girlfriend is not sure. The dog, by the way, you know as well as I do, before you really have a good song, you would create all kinds of interest in different things in these little breaks and you'd have um, explosions and different things to create space and depth and go into that in some other tutorials. But right now, I'm great. The dog's not sure. But here's the length of my song. Okay, I've made my selection and I'm sticking with it. How do I turn this into a song? I go File, Export Audio Video, and I get this selection here. Okay, this is pretty easy to understand. It starts at bar 49, it goes to the end of bar 97. It doesn't say 97 because it's the render length is actually the difference between the two. That's 52 bars. And I have this idea where I could say, what do you want to hear? The master? Or you just want to hear the kick or just any of these other separates? Okay, just the master. And this is a big discussion, but right now my sample rate is at 48K. You can see it with the little speaker. And don't use AIFF. It's kind of on its way out. Use WAV files. And do a super high bit depth, 32-bit master. Now, you may not be able to send that via the Internet, but you want to export your songs as a high-resolution master. In other words, you don't want to take a super low bit rate to email to somebody and have that be your master. So you want to do a big bit rate master. This isn't great. Desktop, blah, blah, blah. This isn't great. Test mix. Bang, just like this. It goes off. Well, how do I email stuff around? Well, I'm going to show you this 
a bonus track. If you are a Mac user or a Windows user, go up to iTunes and there is a whole section at Apple called Mastered for iTunes. And basically you do a little bit of reading and you go and you get this little application. It is Windows or Mac. And this is a little droplet. What's a droplet? A droplet is a script where I can take the big file from my genius project. This is it, which is a whopping 38 megs. Here it is. Okay, this is all bonus. This is extra for you guys only right here, right now. So many engineers just don't know this, and it's a shock because the best way to handle your music is export it high as it can possibly be. It's 32 bits per sample, 48K, that's as big as it can get for what we were using. And then at the very last moment, it goes down for emailing. So I'm gonna drag it on top of this droplet. It's going to say, cool. Again, you don't even have to look at it because it does it itself. In here, you can see it working. It's doing a CAF file, core audio file, wave to AIF to CAF to AAC, process completed. Okay, what is this? This is what I email, 3.1 megs, and this would go right to iTunes as an Apple iTunes master, for real. You're going to find that in quality and in imaging and depth and sound, for most people, almost indistinguishable from this 38 meg file. Okay, all that was bonus. I wasn't planning on showing you, but stuff's got to sound great for the family dog. And it does, right like this. Wow, wow, wow.